Thank you very much. Uh, let me thank uh, for this uh, excellent uh, possibility uh, to present here my opinion of uh, view uh, on matters uh, which I believe are indeed related to the message of Pope Francis, which we received in his encyclical. Uh, so uh, complex processes of civilization changes have been taking place for over two centuries. For about 30 years, they have definitely intensified, transformed, deepened, and accelerated. This is the social, economic, and cultural context in which Pope Francis urges us to universal brotherhood. This call seems to meet the most dramatic need of our time. In a cursory analysis of the civilization process, processes, I especially focus on their effect, uh, which is human loneliness in a world of enormous social stratification the disintegration of traditional social structures and the increasingly uh, massive occurrence of egocentric individuals as, I suppose, a defensive attitude. I'm also dealing here with the question of the influence of narcissistic mass culture uh, on this attitude. And uh, I'm trying to answer the question about the place of subjectivity and fraternity in the economy. A review of the basic ideas of the main economic doctrines and economic models would allow me to distinguish the preconditions for a subjective economy. But in this presentation, I can only mention it. I wrote about, uh, more about it in the full text I sent. I am also discussing the problem of economic and social effect effectiveness. Uh, effectiveness of various social economic strategies in order to justify the belief that the prosocial strategy is effective. The encyclical Fratelli Tutti of Pope Francis shows in dramatic way the immense and as a result of social atomization and loneliness of modern people. At the same time, however, it is a lesson of great hope. Its sources is the evangelical love of the neighbor. Also the distant one, whether geographically, uh, culturally, economically, or socially. Emile Dacam at the turn of the 19th and uh, 20th centuries wrote about objective economic and social processes that resulted in the development of the social division of labor. This in turn indispensable leads to serious civilizational uh, changes. This included social atomization and uh, the resulting individual and collective anarchy. This in turn leads to human suffering, the disintegration of the most important communities related to the atomization uh, deprives people of social reasons for life. As I understand it, the disintegration of communities throw us into loneliness and selfishness. Alexis de Tocqueville generally took a positive attitude towards American democracy, but there were a few things that made him seriously concerned. This included especially the danger of egocentric individualism and its claim to a particular form of freedom. The Tocqueville wrote, egotism blights the germ over virtue. Individualism at first only subs the virtue of public life, but in the long run, it attacks and destroys all others and is a length absorbed in downright egotism. Uh, Holy Father uh, wrote nowadays that in times of global change, uh, this is a quotation. The one thing is lives in its wake is the drive to limitless consumption and expression of empty individualism. So, undoubtedly, secularization is the next extremely important civilization process, which intensifies the total range of egocentric individualism. One of the symptoms of the expansion of egocentric individualism, especially 
understood in terms of instrumental rationalism, another child of industrial civilization, is the use issue of subjectivity. Subjectivity is a result of a specific level of development of humanity in human person, or growth of altruism in an individual, which is originally narcissistic in nature. The lack of love for one's neighbor, which is the result of egocentric or even narcissism, brings extremely detrimental effects of the mental health and development possibilities of an individual. But you can also speak about cultural, social, and economic selfishness or narcissism. It produces deplorable consequences everywhere. I would like to focus a bit elsewhere on all these dimensions of the lack of subjectivity rooted in the lack of love for one's neighbor. Here, I will only point out that narcissism is a neurosis resulting from an unsatisfied need for love and dignity. Mass culture mentioned here seems to me to be the lining for the uniform of economic globalization. The beginning of a global society that is forming around the global market causes a special career of the old, though not at all tifless, mass culture. Uh, in new role, global quasi culture, mass culture. But mass culture also has a real impact when it comes to social stratification. It is worth mentioning here above all about social marginalization, which creates a new significant and numerically a power quasi-social class, the included. Cultural exclusion appears to be an important factor of all kinds, including, including economic exclusion, and plays a major role in the process of social reproduction. So the properties of mass culture means that man has almost exclusive contact with the virtual world, world of mutually exclusive rationalizations, advice, interpretations, the vibrating and changing reality of authorities and revelations that are subject to the laws of the media market appearing and disappearing along with its pulsation consistent with the law and, uh, of supply and demand. The psyche that grows under the influence of this culture in the conditions of such a disintegration distances itself poorly from the virtual message. This is reflected secondarily in the level of family life, parental abilities, uh, choosing lifestyles, styles, sense of responsibility, etc., etc. The desire for love, the certainty of basing on someone and the ever diminishing ability to do so, or even following the values of, and patterns that excluded it, is another contradiction of the contemporary world. For many people, it also creates a sense of alienation, rage, aggression, and fundamentalist fixation. It is yet another response to the suffering of an offended in broken and broken identity. In the light of what has been said about responsibility and subjectivity, we understand their crisis in the age of globalization. The achievement of subjectivity by man is a condition for overcoming natural, in the sense of biological nature, egoism. But for that, you need subjective social relations. This, in turn, depends to a large extent on the subjectivity of society and culture, and also, to a large extent, on the subjective economy. We are dealing here with a complex multifactorial wishes circle. The economy should be given separate attention. Especially important are social inequalities, which are sometimes presented in the economy as inevitable 
uh, and maybe even beneficial to economic efficiency. But I believe that excessive economic inequality is not only not necessary or conducive to the economy, but on the contrary. The unfavorable side effects of the industrial revolution overlap nowadays with the second civilization, uh, civilization revolution, post-industrial, with its global, globalization, even stronger egocentric individualism, financial, finalization of the economy, and more uh, degenerate version of mass culture, and increasingly massive turning away from God and the church, at least where this civiliza civilization is the most important advanced. Man is left alone with his increasingly unlimited freedom, even more radical in relation to enlightenment, faith in the omnipotence of reason and obsession with freedom as the crown of self-centered individualism. However- Three minutes, I, Christoph, three minutes. Thank you. Uh, good. <laughs> uh, all for you. <laughs> However, I'm convinced that the essence of this dissociative uh, contradiction is not faith, sentence of faith or in inevitable. There's nothing wrong with the opportunities that civilization gives us. On the contrary, they are wonderful and worth using, but this does not have to, to prevent the building of personal, social, cultural, and economic relationship on the foundation of a uh, brotherhood firmly rooted in God, religion, and the church. A subjective culture, as well as a society and economy are possible. More arguments on this can be found in the, the attached, attached text. This is how I understand, I understand the message of the Holy Father Francis and his encyclical Fratelli Tutti. Perhaps this is one of the most needed of that the church can propose at the moment and which may uh, favor favorably change the fate of the world and by the way, the situation and importance of the church in this world. So I'm finished. Thank you very much. <laughs>